Recording in progress. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, then uh, he came, the rich man came to Jesus and asked uh, Jesus, and you know, what good thing shall I do to receive uh, eternal life? And Jesus said that, you know, um, by asking me what good thing, only um, God is the one, like uh, he is the one good, you know. And then uh, he says that there is only one who is good, okay. So if you want to enter into eternal life and you follow all the commandments. And then he said that, you know, I've been following all these commandments all my life. You know, then he said that, um, then one thing, you know, if you lacking in your life, if you want to be complete, then you sell everything what you have and then follow me. Okay. So when he said that, when he said that, and he, this rich young man could not do that. And he left Jesus and he went away. And then he's uh, Jesus turning to disciples and telling, you know, that rich man entering into heaven is very difficult. It's, it's really difficult. You know how difficult it is? Even the camel can go through the needle you know the eye of the needle but a rich man cannot <laughs> enter into the kingdom but even the camel can go through the eye of the needle is that impossible mm -hmm. you know then when when he said that immediately you know disciples ask him then in that case then who is going to be saved you know if, if if this much difficulty, then how? Who is going to be saved? And then Jesus says that, you know, this is difficult for people, but for God, all things are possible. For people, it is impossible. You know what? Today I'm telling you, any you know, we ourselves make a decision. It's We cannot do that. We cannot. Anything I'm telling you, if a rich man giving up riches, it's very hard. It's very, it's, it's impossible for, for, to do such thing, you know, but, uh, um, for, um, okay. For, but God, it is possible. He can do it. Okay. So, and so nothing is impossible to God. So if God speaks to people, if God encounters, if God encounters a person, they can do it. They can change. Even it's a rich man or a poor man. Is a very tough man. Is you know what sinner, horrible sinner. Whoever that man is, if God speaks, if God is the one who is calling the person, God gives grace to the person to obey Him. Okay, so that's what Jesus meant here. See, for He Himself want to come, He cannot come. He cannot. If he himself have to sell all the riches, he cannot. But if God is if God is visiting you, if God is telling you, he will give you power to do it. Okay? So that's what he said. Then, um, uh, then uh, they said, uh, disciples said, God, then we left everything. All we have, we left everything to follow you. Yes, exactly right. When Jesus called those disciples, they left everything. They were fishing. They left their fishing and they left their father. They left their families and they just followed Christ. Everything they had, they left behind, right? And then the, that's why they're asking God, in our case, we left everything to follow you, right? And then Jesus said, what do we get then? They're asking Jesus, what do we get then? Then Jesus said that, you know what? You are going to receive hundred times more. 
on this earth what you left hundred times you receive more and then also eternal life you know and so he's on this earth i was thinking that you know all the disciples all their life they suffered a lot they suffered persecution you know they suffered all kinds of things in the in this earth they never enjoyed like you know a materialistically or um, they of course they had such a peace and joy in their hearts and they had the presence of god the, that was there but like physically like you know not having any properties they left everything and you know that kind of so but god said they left their families but god said 100 times i'll give you on this earth on this earth say you know think about it god is going to be faithful to his own word he will when he said he will fulfill his word so we are going to come back to this earth to live on this earth for thousand years and even after thousand years heaven is going to come down to this earth heavenly jerusalem is going to come down to this earth and we are going to live forever beloved these riches everything what god promised we will receive but as he said on this earth that i am saying that thousand years of ruling on this earth they might see that promise being fulfilled in their life okay so then um here in the vineyard um and another parable jesus is telling them you know um uh, heaven is like a vineyard heaven is like a vineyard kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard okay and he went out and he want laborers workers to work in his vineyard right he went out to hire workers he found somebody you know and he brought them uh, and he before you know they they talk about the money okay right okay for a denarii you know denarius for a denarius for the day for daily wages right okay i'll give you denarius and you work in my vineyard like that he brought and and they they were working and again he went maybe morning he went and he brought some workers and again he went in the afternoon and he brought some more workers he found some more workers they're not doing anything outside so he called them and okay why don't you work in my vineyard i'll give you denarius okay and then again he went in the evening also he found some more they're not doing anything outside so he called them also okay work in my vineyard i'll give you denarius okay okay so like that they and uh, they settle the accounts when they settle accounts they're giving their daily wages and he called he called these in the last people who came evening they who joined the work very late he called them first and give a denarius for them and then afternoon people he called and given them denarius to them and the people who were working in the morning from the morning they were expecting okay i know he might give us more money because um, for them only he given denarius so just for few hours they worked they got denarius but whereas we are working from the morning so they might give us more money and then but they also been given same money denarius and these people were upset who worked from the morning is so upset and then they went to him and asked you equaled us with them you know like you given same amount but he asked then the owner said did i not you know and agree with you for denarius for the work yes that's all and i given you what we agreed on that and why you get upset about others you know so and then he says that um, take what is yours and go but i wish to give to this last man the same as to you is it not lawful for me to do what i wish with what is my own 
Or is your I envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be first is last. You know, so what is the lesson that we are going to learn? He is talking about his ways of heaven, how heaven works. Okay. So in this world, it's different. The In the world, in God's world, it's different. Okay. So it's not the same. See, in this, our mind, mindset in this world is like that. Okay. If this person gets, the person who, who is doing less work, get this much money. The person who does more work, well, might, we should get more money. That is the worldly mindset, beloved. But in the world of God, heavenly mindset is this. You know what? Whatever God given you the work, he will reward you the work what you have done. It's not that your work is small. Somebody's work is big so that they get more, more rewards. And because your work is small, you get less rewards. No, beloved. In the heaven doesn't work like that. In the heaven works in this way. Whatever God given you, you are only accountable, answerable to that work only, beloved. You know, somebody's work is preaching maybe. Somebody's work is more healing, preaching. Maybe God called them to do that, okay? If God called you to do something else, you should be doing that only. You should not think that, oh, because their work is so great and they will be rewarded more because my work is only cleaning the church. So maybe I might be rewarded less. No, beloved. In the heaven doesn't work like that. In the heaven, it is a cleaning, it is a preaching, it is a healing, whatever it is. It is all to do with that faithfulness to the work which been entrusted to you. Hallelujah. You are only answerable to the work which been given to you, beloved. Whatever the work, it's a small, it's a big, it's a limelight work, it's a hidden work. Beloved, somebody's work might be a limelight. Like a, a preacher work is limelight. It's a public, it's a public speaker. And people will notice, people recognize and he will get all the popularity and famous he become. You think that, oh, that person might be great. No, beloved. Somebody's work means hidden. You don't, you don't, public might not notice you. You might be very faithfully cleaning the church or doing the taking care of the things in the kitchen. People might not notice you. You know what? But the reward from the Lord... People might not notice you. People might not give you honor for your work. But in the heaven, beloved, your reward is same as the reward of an evangelist, an apostle, or a great prophet. Okay? So that's how the heaven works. Heaven is different from the world, beloved. You know, that's why it says that the last shall be first and the first last, you know. It doesn't matter. Okay, you, you are a young believer. Oh, I'm only, I'm only Christian for just a few years only. But some some people are Christians for 30 years, 40 years, beloved. doesn't matter. They don't get more than you. Your, your time, your work, reward, same. Okay? So we all have to be... First, that's why he's saying that he wants to make everything equal. First, last, last, first means what? All are equal. That's what he meant. All are equal. Okay. No difference in the kingdom of God. No difference in the kingdom of God. Everybody is equal in the kingdom of God. Okay. So um, another parable. So then after that, they moved on and then they went to Jerusalem and then and he was going to was about to go to jerusalem and then he took all the disciples aside and he started telling them now you know what we are going to jerusalem now so now the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of these people so he started talking to them about his death his 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 death and his crucifixion he started talking to them you know 
and then on the third day uh, he will be raised up he so he he started talking about those things now and after that you know um uh, these uh, uh, two disciples mother came to jesus and asked jesus jesus i want my son one son to be your right hand one son to be other left hand side i want them to sit beside you in your in your kingdom you know so who's uh, who's mother the sons of zebedee came to jesus okay so she pleaded jesus she has this wish okay and um, in your kingdom lord i want my children to sit beside you one in either side <laughs> you know any mother will have that kind of all mothers always have that kind of wish oh i wish my children to be the top not the bottom i wish my children to be closer to god you know they should be given a prominent place in the kingdom of god so every mother have that wish right and so jesus answered to that lady you do not know what you are asking okay see to sit with him what it takes to sit with him you know do you drink the cup what i drink you know so because why he seated with the father on the right hand side of the father why he got that position because of his humility he humbled himself he is obedient to the father unto the death he was so obedient to his father and is been lifted up that high to be seated with the father the how low he went and how high god brought him up always i'm telling you the more you humble the more you go low the more you will be lifted up in the kingdom of god you know so that's what he did said that you know that the cup i drink you know the cup is that a cup of suffering you know the amount of suffering i go through to come to this position you know that do are you willing to drink that cup to sit with me are you willing to drink that cup what i drank right but he says that immediately he says to them you know my cup you shall drink my cup because really the disciples drank the same cup what jesus drank they went through suffering they went through persecution they all become martyrs right so that's why immediately jesus saying that yes you shall you shall drink the cup you know what i drank you are going to drink it but you know what sitting with me on the left hand and the right hand that is not in my control that is in father who already he prepared for someone father only that's that's the will of the father he decides who's supposed to be sitting you know so that's a, a not in my you know i'm not the one who decides that that's what jesus tells him tells her you know so then uh, when when he says that and all other disciples become um, upset with them with these disciples because their mother asked this other disciples are looking at this you know and then and then immediately he said to them you know um uh, he called everybody all the disciples and says that you know in the gentiles it's like this whoever wants to be a great person he always like you know here in the in this world great person is like who exercises authority right over other people and who exercises authority and power over other people and you know that's they 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 are the great you know so but in the kingdom of god it is not like that as i said you know in the kingdom of god you have to humble yourself you have to go low to become great among you right and then uh, he's is saying that um, you shall become like a servant to become a great in the kingdom of god you shall you shall be you you shall serve others you shall be a servant to others means what serving all the time i'm telling you serving heart beloved you know we should have that heart of serving always we should serve others you know 
we should not expect other people to serve us okay um that person has to do my work that person has to pray for me this person has to reach me out it's not that like that we cannot do that beloved we have to serve others we have to go to people we have to you know tell the people about god we have to be praying for people you know and we should help others we should give counseling we sh we should serve we should serve other people needs what they need what they have what, what in what way you can help them to to build them up you know so serving heart we should have okay so that's what jesus also when he was on this earth he was serving everybody he was meeting all people needs he was he was serving people by giving them the word by healing them by delivering them by teaching them you know and meeting their needs right so and then um, then uh, they were going then there uh, two blind men were there okay and everybody following him and uh, then but two blind men on the road they heard jesus passing by and uh, they were immediately they, they only heard right because they cannot see right they heard that jesus passing by you know they must be hearing jesus who jesus says and who what jesus doing miracles they might be hearing about miracles they got such a faith that you know jesus can heal them right so that they started shouting like a loud voice have mercy on us son of david you know they were shouting and then they cried like that and then and uh, uh, you know and the crowd uh, was annoyed by their shouting and said them just just be quiet why why are you loud like that just be quiet you know we also do sometimes if someone is too loud we try to quieten them because we don't understand they're they're loud because they're having such a pain in their heart they wanted a healing they wanted god's attention that's why they sometimes they cry loud and they speak loud and we try to quieten them you know here the crowd try to quieten them and you know what um and then when they do that they cry more louder lord they cried out all the more <laughs> they cry when someone is trying to stop you you want to cry more loud you know son of david have mercy on us you know so they did that you know they that's the cut attention of david attention of jesus you know there's something beloved to catch god's attention you know what really catches his attention is our faith catches his attention you know the reason here why jesus stopped there and asked them to come what attracted him what really caught his attention there is that they shouting more louder after they were opposed by the crowd beloved that's what i'm telling you when you face an opposition when you are doing something when you are praying to god but in the face of the opposition you still do more beloved that is something speaks about your faith that speaks something about your faith beloved if you want to catch god's attention to you do something out of faith beloved do something anything that catches is with faith beloved a whole story you can read the book of new testament book every time jesus was so drawn to one thing is faith every time when a person exercises some extraordinary faith and jesus gets that attention immediately and jesus says something he could not be quiet and he he appreciates them you know you you saw that you he was telling appreciating canaanite woman faith he appreciated centurion's faith right so and again this this man this blind man was shouting more in the face of the opposition you know 
in the first time when they cried out that did not catch his attention what second time when they cried out why because they were stopped by the crowd not to shout but even in that time they shouted all the more out more than before that caught his attention beloved okay that's why i'm giving you a little bit more extra time to stress some points in this bible study because these are the points that will build your life build your faith also okay and then jesus called them and said that okay what do you want me to do for you now you know he, jesus knows that jesus knows their need okay they wanted healing he knows that and but knowingly he asked them this word again you know sometimes beloved it this is good for us to confess with our mouth because always i'm telling you if we are very like a very like a outwardly confessing from our mouth there is something happens beloved in the spiritual realm there's something a power of god is going to release for us that's why jesus knowingly their need he still asked them the question what do you want me to do you know why because you should have an expectation every time when you go to god you have to go with an expectation beloved jesus wanted them to have an expectation okay so that's the reason he was asking them what is your expectation that's the that's the meaning here what do you want me to do for you so what are you expecting from me that's what he meant okay and they said that lord we want to see want our eyes be open so be clear what you want every time when you go to god every time you go to god go with an expectation every time when you sit for prayer prayer should have a focus even you do a fasting prayer fasting prayer should have a focus what do you want be clear about it okay i'm doing this fasting prayer because i want god to do this the something you need to have a focus okay so then and then jesus said more he moved with compassion hallelujah always you know the healings he does with compassion beloved healings always he does with compassion okay he moved with compassion jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him i realized this father heavenly father gives us this heart of compassion beloved through that heart only healing will flow through the heart of compassion okay so you need to know love brings healing love love for a person beloved when you love you know in the beginning i was just i was seeking god for the gifts of holy spirit in the beginning when i saw people in our church i was a young believer there in india they were all gifted people when i saw them i was asking god god i also want to have gifts but god told me first focus on loving people first focus on loving people then after that i changed my focus i was just first thing priority in our life is beloved love love one another i was just focusing on loving people then the gift started operating in me gift of healing gift of prophecy what all gifts god given all gifts can operate only through love that's why in corinthians chapter 13 it says that about love speaks even though you have gift of tongues even the prophecy if you do not have love everything is waste that's what he says he before begin that chapter he says i will show you the most excellent way and then he speaks about love in the whole chapter beloved why he says that 
in 12th chapter, he has spoken about the gifts of the Spirit. And then a beginning of the 13th chapter, he says that, I will eat, I will show you the most excellent way. And then he speaks about love in the 13th chapter. You know what? Yes, gifts are there. But what is the most excellent way to operate gifts is about love. If you have love, is the most excellent way the gifts can be operated through love. Beloved, you notice in Jesus every time, it, this word is insisted, he moved with compassion and the healing starts. Jesus touched their eyes and immediately they regained their sight and followed him. Hallelujah. And then let's move on to chapter 21. Okay. And then when they had approached Jerusalem, had come to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, okay, go into the village and 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 bring a colt for me, you know, and untie them and bring the colt for me. You will go to a so-and-so person there. You will find a colt tied there, you know, uh, uh, tied there. Uh, and donkey and colt, like young ones of donkeys, colt, right? So donkey and is young one, colt. Both you find, you untie them and bring them. If the owner asks you, why are you taking it? Then you tell the owner, Lord need it. Okay? And then immediately he will send it out. Hallelujah. You know what? Jesus already saw this in his vision. Father, Heavenly Father, God, you know, he moved in giftings. Wow, that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Before even happening anything, God already reveals you everything beforehand, right? So for Jesus, it was already revealed for him to take a donkey and go, right? Into the, enter into that Jerusalem city of, so that donkey where God is providing that donkey, God already showed him in the vision, maybe probably, you know, so-and-so person, so-and-so house, that donkey there, you should go there and get that donkey. So God already must have spoken to that owner of the person already, you know, about giving the donkey to the master, to the Lord Jesus. So he must have spoken, God must have already spoken to the person. That's why when these disciples tell him, you know, Lord needs it, immediately he let it go. Okay, so he brings that donkey on the coat and then mm, put a uh, cloth on that donkey. And, and this is already prophecy, beloved, already spoken through the prophet. Okay, in uh, I think Isaiah, it already spoken this prophecy. Say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them. Okay, brought the donkey and colt and laid their coats on them. Their coats, they put their coats on them. And then he sat on that coats. Okay, so this, uh, everything, beloved, what I want you to see here, every step of Jesus, He's supposed to be doing this in this time. In this time, in this hour, he's supposed to be doing this. It is how already God ordained the steps of Jesus. And prophetically, it was revealed to Jeremiah and Isaiah. There, These are the two prophets mostly said about the, com about the Jesus coming and his, uh, his crucifixion. Most of that Jesus, about the revelation of Jesus, these are the prophets brought that. And they prophesied more about these things, right? Oh my God, this, uh, this really amazes me. I'm telling you, today, e your steps, every child of God, God already ordained the steps of his children. Before even they were born, you know, what you should be doing in this hour, 
what you should be doing in the next hour what you should be doing in the after one day what you should be doing at this day like that beloved everything about jesus was prophesied through the prophets it means god has a clear picture of your whole life your whole life story is god already planned is that's why if you can surrender your life to jesus the way how jesus surrendered if you can obey jesus the way jesus obeyed his father you will be exactly walking in the steps what god ordained for you to walk in he will just exactly lead you through those steps because god planned it for you many times we don't listen to holy spirit we listen to our own mind we follow our own ways our own steps our own decisions that's why we miss the steps of god and that's why many times we run into problems we run like into trials and unnecessary trials we go through because jesus god never planned those trials in your life god never planned those hardships in your life but how come they happen because this is happen because we don't follow his footsteps we don't follow his plan and his guidance we follow our own mind that's why beloved many times we go through problems hardships but still god is merciful god is gracious he still brings us back again beloved if you if we, if this word is touching your heart today let us make a decision today itself and tell god god from here after i want to follow your guidance your leading of the spirit how many are led by the spirit are called the sons of god lord i want to be led by you god you guide my steps every minute beloved moment by moment god shall i do this god shall i do this god shall i be thinking this god shall i make this decision god lord shall i speak this word lord everything lord beloved i'm not saying that go into a prayer for every moment or oh, you go into a big prayer no beloved deep inside of your heart holy spirit god living in your heart deep inside of your being from there he gives you instructions from there he gives you leading don't follow your fleshly mind follow the mind of christ okay then uh, uh then he sat on the coats okay on the donkey and then uh, they were all singing this song hosanna hosanna to the son of david blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest hallelujah this is the song we sing today right so this is about that you know everybody the crowd started cheering up crowd started so joyfully singing this song hosanna hosanna right and then you know he entered into the jerusalem all the city was just stirred and saying who is this and the crowd was saying they sees the prophet jesus from nazareth in galilee people were you know they were thinking he's the prophet right so that's what their understanding oh he's prophet he's coming but you know what this is all prophesied this is all this supposed to be done but today you know that you and i know that this is the son of god walked entered into the city of god that is the jerusalem hallelujah today do you want jesus to come into our cities do you want jesus to come into a city how they welcomed jesus into their city they started praising him they started saying hosanna hosanna and they started praising him okay he wants to enter into our cities beloved the way how he entered 
he really wants to enter into our cities but you know what he is going to enter into our city through a humble servant of god why he chosen donkey why can't he choose horse horse is something oh great people love to do a horse riding horse animal is so beautiful and so you know a very fast and horse something a pride sign beloved prestige you know but you know what god has chosen donkey to sit on the donkey why god is saying beloved why he wants to come enter into our cities through his humble servants beloved whoever humble themselves like a donkey whoever humble himself god wants to use that person to bring his glory and his presence into our cities beloved okay and then um uh, he entered into the temple he entered into the temple and he found there are many dows and people selling stuff there they're selling things there you know they're doing a business in the temple buying things and selling things you know and and he went there and he overturned all the tables of the money changers you know and then he said to them you turned my father's house as a as a as a you know robbers for robbers den you know like you are stealing you are like a, why he called them like a robbers den you are stealing here money you know it's stealing you are selling things and you are stealing money from people like this you know and you know <clears throat> that doing in the temple for the, the name sake that doing it for name sake oh for god you know we do it for god the name sake they do it but they they take that money for themselves right so that's why he's calling them robbers you're like a robbers den you turned my father's temple like a robbers den and you know supposed to be the temple supposed to be for praying for the nations you know and he is saying that my house shall be called a house of prayer but you are making it a robbers den hallelujah hallelujah we should not do that such thing beloved we should not do such thing no business no market it's not a marketplace it's not a business his temple is for prayer a called a house of prayer and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them beloved in the temple he healed blind and lame yes temple is a supposed to be a place beloved healings can take place people can get healed people can be delivered in the temple we can pray in the temple prayer healings deliverances and then chief priests and the scribes they saw the wonderful things he had done and they heard the sh- children shouting in the temple hosanna son of david and then <clears throat> they're asking do you hear what these children are saying and jesus said to them you know what out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies you prepare a praise for yourself and he left them went out of the city to bethany and spent the night there you know sometimes you know we should really hear the children they make a lot of praises to god more than adults praising god children they don't have any fear and shyness to praise god they just shout and that god loves that god loves to hear 
such praises from people. That's what he's saying that. Nursing babies also. Beloved, the time we are in today, small children love God so much. Today, you see that? I don't know. Nobody has to tell them, oh, you should love God. You should follow God. I don't know. It's it's just automatic that it comes from a child heart. A child loves God. A child loves God. That's all. Child love to praise God. No, they don't need a big gospel to be preached to the child, beloved. Just say a word, Jesus. Every child will respond to that word, Jesus. The love. Shall I stop it here? Because it's a big chapter though. Okay, I'm going to stop it here.